Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today's episode, we're going to take a look at Elan Credit. Now Elan Credit, you might not have heard of them, but they're almost the rewards program that's behind most rewards programs in America at, at credit card issuers. So we're going to break them down, see who they are, what they do, why banks use them, and overall, what does this mean for us, and is this good for the credit and finance industry? So if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get the work. Now, first things first, let me set this one up for a second before we jump into who Elon is exactly. It'll make sense in a minute. So if you go over to the RJ Financial um, YouTube homepage, you'll see that I have a few playlists built out. One of the playlists that's built out is about banks by credit card or credit cards issued by banks. And these this playlist houses the smaller banks, you know, um, there's Huntington, Fifth Third, you know, people like that who do issue cards, but they're more regional banks. And what I happen to notice as I'm going through some of these is, man, a lot of these cards seem to be the exact same. Not only was the landing page on the site the exact same for the bank site, that is, the card art is kind of the same and the rewards are kind of the same. So you look into it further and you figure out that, oh, you know, this is actually the program, the rewards program is run by Elon Credit. That's the same company that comes up a lot. That's probably why these are the same. So then the question becomes, well, who exactly is Elon Credit? What are these services and is this any good? So let's start out with that now that we know the backstory of what is Elon Credit. Well, Elon Credit Card, they provide card rewards program services to banks and credit unions. So currently, you know, they're partnered with about 1,300 banks or credit unions. Now, Elan Credit is actually owned by U.S. Bank, and then we're going to see that relationship in a second. Um, so it was part of Elan Financial Services, to my opinion, to my knowledge, and they've bounced around quite a bit. But U.S. Bank ended up so selling pieces of Elan Financial Services to Fiserv in 2018 for $690 million. So debit card processing, ATM management, and money passed through surcharges. Um, U.S. Bank kept the credit card part and the rewards part. It's now Elan Credit. So that's a little bit about Elan Credit. What they're doing is basically coming in with these smaller banks, credit unions, partnering and saying, hey, we'll run your credit card rewards program on the back end and allowing you know you to basically white label it or private label it, whatever you call it, which is basically like a service, you know, where it's, it's ran by somebody else, but you put your name on the front end. You know, it, there are disclosures saying that it's run by Elan Credit. It's not like a secret, but to the most part of the public, it's basically like these are Comerica Bank credit cards, Flagstar Bank credit cards, for example. So what kind of services does Elan Credit actually offer these banks? Let's take a look at that next. Now, most of the stuff I'm showing you is going to be directly from their website, but they're offering three major services. They have program support, card member support, and product suites. So in, under program support, it is looking like we're saying, hey, we're going to provide all the tools to support your credit card program so your staff can develop deeper relationships with the members. That sounds like a credit union pitch. Um, so using customized approach, we work directly with your credit union to provide high impact marketing, underwriting, employee and training and more. And then card member support. Again, it looks like, hey, if you have an issue with your card or question, you're going to be talking to an Elan employee, meaning they handle customer service as well. And of course, the product suites that we're going to spend a lot of time looking at are the actual card programs, the rewards, and how they all work. So again, this is very interesting to me because this is almost like outsourcing your credit card rewards. Now, a little bit here, how does this normally work? Well, if you take like a Chase, a Bank of America, a Citibank, you know, there's there's the overall holding bank, and then they have they break it down by channel. You have retail banking, business banking, then underneath retail banking, you're gonna have like a deposit account arm, you're gonna have a credit account arm, something like that in these major, major banks. And the reason you'd want to do this is if you're a smaller bank, you might not have the power to be set up like that, though you still have retail and business banking, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're fully staffed to run these as like proper business channels. So if you've ever called in a credit union, trust me, I've called a lot of them, and you need somebody, and they're, well, that person's in a meeting, so call back. Like, that never happens at Bank of America, does it? Like, no, because Bank of America is massive. They're the second biggest bank in the country, and a credit union that happens all the time. They're just not going to scale up enough even at regional banks, they're probably just not going to scale up enough for that. So but why does it matter still? Because still some credit unions get by without this. Well, it matters because as customers come into your bank, they're, we, we don't talk about bank branches as like, you know, 
a sales floor like a car like a car dealership but it's basically that they're trying to sell you financial products so and the, the products that you always need under retail banking are a checking account savings account and a credit card a credit card is an extension of a checking or savings account usually those things are all sold to you at once so selling meaning signing up you don't have to pay money for them but you know you everyone needs those things and you don't want to turn people away because most people just want to do all their banking at one spot, right? Like there are people out there who are like, I don't even, how would you even pay for, you know, pay your bill on a city card if your banking's with Wells Fargo? So for that reason, you bring in the lawn, they're going to do it better than you. They have the resources and then there you go. That's why you want to do it. Now, what else do you get from this from this partnership? Let's take a look at this. This is a little bit older use case from the lawn site, but I did find it interesting. So again, case study for large regional bank increases Forex credit card balances and new accounts. So, you know, you can kind of go through here, large regional bank with nearly 63 billion in total assets, which is not small um, by any means, you know, again, Chase, Bank of America and the trillions, but 63 billion is not bad. And they've got 400 branches. So, I mean, they're still sizable and you can kind of see, again, this is 2015, um, but again, you can see, you know, the graph that they have going here, you can kind of see their growth through it looks like December of 2020 um, regional bank new balances right and that's kind of what you what they want now we don't want to you know carry a balance with credit cards actually but again banks you know they they get money off of that interest payments and things like that so what what this is probably trying to say is hey the alarm program is pretty good pretty competitive customers like it they're using their cards now is that true or not though are these cards actually good well let's take a look at the cards they offer and then we'll make a decision for ourselves so here you have it. this is the consumer credit cards product guide um, so you can choose the card that's right for you they're they're run by visa here um so you have broken up into clean categories you know you have earning valuable rewards so the visa everyday rewards plus you can see that you're getting 4x points on dining, takeout, food delivery, 2x on grocery stores, grocery delivery, gas stations, streaming services, one thing on everything else, and then there's no caps. You can also see what you can redeem for down below. You have the Visa Max Cash Preferred card, 5x back on two categories you choose. Um, first combined, 2000 spent each month in the 2% category as well. And of course, 1% back on everything else, and that's a cash back card. Now, I don't think we need to spend a ton of time on the Visa Platinum. There's a college card as well to satisfy that demographic as well. Now, let's take a look at this. They do have a kind of redemption chart, if you will. So consumer credit cards, rewards, products. So again, they're just kind of going through and showing you, you know, what you would get different spending wise. So you can kind of see what your points are actually going to be worth. So overall, it looks like the points check out from, you know, being, you know, valuable. And they also have the max cash categories down below. So those are the personal. Now let's take a look at the business card. So again, Visa is a payment network and they have them broken out in the same thing. So small to medium size, so less than 5 million annual sales. Visa business cash preferred. 3% categories here. Eligible purchases on gas stations, cell phone services, providers, office supply stores, and on dining. And then one percent and everything else, plus a statement credit for software. And then they have a rewards card, 1.5x with no limits. I mean, you know, that's okay. You know, the rest of them are kind of, you know, they are what they are. They're just small to large size businesses, so they have something in there for everyone, I guess. And then we can look at the reward products in comparison as well to see what you're actually getting for all of this spend. So overall, I'm going to pause here for a second. Did those cards look familiar at all to you? Some of them should. Remember in the beginning where we said Elan Credit is like a, an arm or division of U.S. Bank. It's because these cards are actually the SAC cards that U.S. Bank offers. Well, just about. They're like 90, 99% the same. So if you take a look at our category card, well, that category card is basically the U.S. Bank Cash Plus card. I'll put it on screen. You have you have just about the same categories. I think the Cash Plus has a little bit more, but you have the same 5% back, the same $2,000 cap. Now, the Everyday Rewards Plus card is just about the exact same as the Altitude Go card as well. Some people have called that the Gold Card Killer. And then if you flip over to the business side, the business cash preferred card is the exact same as the U.S. Bank triple cash card, a card that I actually have myself. 
So there you go. That kind of answers the question, are these cards any good? They're based off of three of our favorite cards. Again, these U.S. Bank cards are very popular. You know, so well, what does this mean for us? The final question. Again, um, Elon Credit's partnered with a ton of different issuers. Again, you can check that playlist. I know like Comerica and Flagstar, you know, for example, that I've done, they have cards just like these. Now, not every issuer has to take every type of card, so it's not necessarily a guarantee that, you know, that, that local issuer is going to have all these cards. But what this means is if you like, you know, the U.S. Bank, you know, Cash Plus and you want more 5X categories, you could in theory go around and, you know, find issuers with this card and get more versions. Now, you just have to keep in mind that, again, these are smaller regional banks and credit unions. So, you know, you might need a relationship or to apply and branch with them first to get them. So overall, final thoughts here, you know, I think Elon Credit, they're actually, their product, the, the core cards are pretty good because they're based on good cards. And I will admit, when I first go through some of these smaller banks, and I look at this, I, I, I almost write them off, but then I look at them like, oh, no, actually, this is pretty good. Once I, it dawned on me, I think when I was doing the Comerica video, it dawned, I'm like, oh, no, this is actually the triple cash card. It's exactly the triple cash card. That's what brought on this video. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I never really love customer service being outsourced. I will be honest about that. I've never called Elon. They, they could be fine. I don't know. I'm not saying they're not. I don't love customer service being outsourced. I love that I can jump on Amex and have a chat, like a little typing chat with a customer service rep and usually get something done. Um, the same with Chase. and They're usually pretty good to me. So I don't, I don't know if I care about that part. Um, but overall, the underlying product seems fine. The, the cash conversion, I, I still would say these are probably cash back cards. You know, the, the valuation is probably going to drop, in my opinion, I would guess, if you if you cash out for like merchandise or something like that. Um, so probably just cash back, which is fine. Now, the other thing here is that I think when you go over to the credit card issuers, they need to actually do a better job. Because if you go to their landing pages, you know, there's not a ton of information. There's not nearly as much information as there is on a Chase or Citibank card. You can't click into the card or do anything like that. They could also probably update the card art so they're all a little bit better looking and they don't look the same. Granted, I understand most people who are going after these are going to get one, maybe two, but I, I do think you know the overall service of what they seem to be offering is actually fairly competitive for a few cards. So overall, I don't think this is terrible for the industry. I think it's actually an interesting concept. Um, again, I think the, the car issuers, the banks themselves, could do a little bit better job of selling this. You know, when you go over to the site, it doesn't even tell you all the categories that the cash that their version of the Cash Plus is going to get. You have to go through, you look it up somewhere else, and then you can find all the categories. Like, that's inexcusable, in my opinion, given that you're actually offering, like, a pretty good car. Um, but overall, you know, that's been a lot on credit. So if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. My question for you guys is let me know what you think about Elon Credit as a service and their underlying products. Have you ever used them? Do you work with an issuer who uses them as their reward system? I'd love to get your thoughts on that. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.